partial fraction decomposition for this expression. Notice the bottom becomes x times x squared plus 3x plus 4. And in this case, that's an irreducible quadratic factor. So our partial fraction decomposition is going to require a over x plus, in the bottom we'll have this x squared plus 3x plus 4, and in the bottom we'll have to make a linear, general linear function, so go bx plus c. Okay, that's our partial fraction decomposition. Again, these are very useful because this will turn out into something that's much easier to integrate in a calculus class. And so to simplify this, we're going to multiply both sides by x times x squared plus 3x plus 4. And when we do so against the far left, all we're left with is 5x minus 8. When we do so against the a part, it looks like the a's will reduce, so we'll have a times x squared plus 3x plus 4. And then when we do it against the other part, the x squared plus 3x plus 4 will cancel out. So we'll just have a bx plus c multiplied against an x. Okay, now we're going to use this, but I'm going to need some space for the algebra, so I'm going to move on to the next page so we can see this more easily. Just rewrote what I had before, 5x minus 8 equals a times x squared plus 3x plus 4 plus bx plus c times x, and I'm going to plug in now some special numbers. Let's see what happens when I plug in x equals 0. On the left, 0 minus 8 is just negative 8. On the right, 0 plus 0 plus 4 is 4 multiplied against the a. And notice that since x is taking, I'm letting 0 be for x, that means this part's just going to be eliminated, and so we just get negative 8 equals 4a, and so a equals negative 2. a equals negative 2. Okay, now. Unfortunately, we don't get any other really sweet reduction. We're going to have to do a little bit more work here. So I'm going to plug in now just a convenient number. Really, I'm just going to choose a small number. It's easy to work with, like 1. And if I plug that in on the left, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. Let's see here. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 4 is 8 times a. And a was negative 2. So 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. And since x is 1, x would be 1 here, and x would be 1 here, so we really just have a b plus c. So we're going to plus b plus c. And of course, if I were to add the 16 over to the other side, we end up getting b plus c equals the number 13, because negative 3 plus 16 would be positive 13. Okay, now let's plug in x equals negative 1. Uh, x equals negative 1. On the left, negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. And then when I multiply that by a, which is negative 2, we'll get a negative 4. So I'm looking at a negative 4 there. And then over here, notice that if we let x be negative 1, b be negative 1, then negative negative on the b would mean we'd have a plus b, and negative 1 on the c would mean minus c. So add 4 to both sides, and we end up seeing that b minus c is equal to negative 13 plus 4, which is negative 9. Well, that's convenient, isn't it? Add those equations together, it looks like 2b equals, let's see, 13 minus 9 is 4, which would mean that b equals 2. And if we were to back substitute into, say, this equation right here, we'd get 2 plus c equals 13. And if 2 plus c equals 13, that would mean that c is equal to 11. We get that c is equal to 11. So it looks like a equals negative 2, b equals 2, and c equals 11. So if we come back to our original, we're going to have an answer of negative 2, let's put this in a different color, negative 2 over x plus b was 2x and c was an 11, and that's over the quantity x squared plus 3x plus 4. 
and that's our partial fraction decomposition.